first sort of talking about like how to introduce the talk and um, I guess I had a few thoughts that I just wanted to put out there and then I'll kind of pass the torch. Um, but uh, I just wanted to mention that I discovered Brenna's work through Tumblr and um, for those who don't know what Tumblr is, it's a, uh, it's a popular image sharing platform. And um, I recently read an article by Michael Sanchez in the summer issue of Art Forum um, entitled Art and Transmission. And in the article, he talks about the influence um, uh, web platforms like Tumblr and uh, Contemporary Art Daily, which is a, uh, another um, blog in which galleries post up images of their installations has shifted the aesthetic, the aesthetic sensibility. Um, out there, and one thing he mentioned that it really struck me is he talked about how informational form and effective content are now optimized for the feedback between the iPhone interface, the feed, and the aggregator. Um, and um, he sees a correspondence between memes, you know, popular internet memes, and then um, memes within art practice and art making. So why is it that certain things kind of bubble up to the surface? and um, and how do, how does you know the fact that a lot of people interface and experience art through Tumblr, through Contemporary Daily, through these other platforms um, affect uh, like over and above like the gallery and museum experience affect kind of how artists are thinking about their work and how artists are also like um, you know spreading images related to their practice. Um, and I feel like your work is a, really a, a lot about. Um, you know, establishing a resonance with technology. And I feel like you try to think with your tools um, and kind of have an individual reckoning with those tools. Um, uh, so there's like a sort of a, it's like an individual relationship with um, the tools that you use in your practice, but there's also an attention to how the group, like the feedback between the group and the tools and yourself in your performance practice. Um, and uh, in that, I also feel like there's, um, an influence of Marshall McLuhan's sort of concept of thinking about how technology allows us to extend our consciousness. So you kind of explore your own individual <coughs> consciousness in relationship to technology, and then also in your performances, think about sort of the group's relationship to technology. Um, and after reading Michael Sanchez's article, I've been thinking about how there might be another layer of brewing as well, um, and how platforms like Tumblr are, are having a huge effect in how we process visual information, um, and a huge effect in how we have a, our own aesthetic sensibility. Um, so we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier today, and I just wanted to put that out there, thinking about your practice um, within this greater f um, frame, or this greater shift in the paradigm and how people actually interact with art, which is more so through Tumblr, more so sort of through their iPhone, more so through their feed aggregator, and less so through the actual like physical experience of being in a gallery. Um, yeah, so that was just like the one thing I kind of wanted. And you're going to talk about like live journal and some other, you know, sort mm -hmm. of path of where you landed now. So yeah. Anyway, cool. I wanted, I Thank just you. Put that out there and <laughs> pass it on to you. All right. Um, yeah, it's uh, my work has been a lot about. Um, finding ways to create a practice for myself that um, allows me to be constantly like in a flow, um, a creative flow where I'm uh, you know, able to um, focus on things around me and um, put them through sort of a filter and look at them in a new way and then go back out and see them again. Um, like a very you know, personal, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, method of um, figuring out uh, how to stay in tune with what's around me. So as a teenager, I got really into uh, live journal as uh, a way of documenting my, my flow. Um, and at that time, I was mostly interested in found imagery. So I would kind of go on walks through the internet to different websites and find images that like drew me in. And then um, I would arrange them uh, on this like journal of my um, found images. <clears throat> And through this, I found a community of other artists kind of around the world who were doing the same thing. Um, 
And that was uh, very exciting for me um, because it, w it felt like a very fresh, new uh, way of um, interfacing with uh, like the people who were looking at the work, but also for myself to see like every day what other people were posting just casually. So it kind of felt like I was in their brains and they were in my brain all at once. Like we were just like, you know, um, getting each other's feed constantly. Um, so through that um, in way of working, um, I think it affected my, I was at the same time I was in school and I was doing a lot of sculptural work and painting and um, more like physical kinds of things. And I brought this um, method of collecting and arranging into my sculptural practice as well. Um, and I'll show some uh, images of some of the sculptural stuff I was working on at that time. Um, over here. So like in the same way that I had been collecting and arranging um, images in the computer, I started collecting and arranging um, just material sensory bits that I found like outside. I would go on long walks every day um, between my house and my school. I would always do like a one hour walking commute um, and I would like very um, consciously focus my attention on my surroundings and like how the material was arranged like and the rhythm of um, the walk and then when I got to school I would like arrange like I would collect you know bricks and wood and leaves or whatever on my way to school and then at my studio I would arrange them in a way that kind of reflected uh, how the shape of my mind um, felt. And then, you know, the next day on my walk, I would be thinking about the <clears throat> compositions that I had made the day before, and that would give me like a new kind of um, intuitive feeling with the, my surroundings. <clears throat> so also, so, uh, when I graduated school, right around this time, um, I also started working collaboratively with a group of other artists. Um, and we were, um, we were all, we had all just kind of like recently graduated school and um, we were excited to try to like, m you know, make something new and to collaborate like very fully with each other. And um, we we're called Oregon, Oregon Painting Society. We lived together and made installations um, and performances and recordings. <clears throat> and for me, I, uh, it was really important to do this work. Um, because we were um, we were all coming at it uh, with the hope of like creating a group that could be like very um, ecstatic and like utopian, um, like mind meld, creating our own universe, um, and we did that <laughs> uh, as much as we could. So this is the one installation that we made. Um, we would just like spend a month uh, building everything and as long as we could have in the space, uh, creating a zone that was like fully immersive. Um, and we made a interactive um, analog elect uh, synthesizers that were embedded in sculptures um, with Birch Cooper over there was in it also. <laughs> um, so for us, like when we finished, when we would finish an installation, we would get the opportunity to then play in the installation. Um, and some of the um, instruments would be controlled by 
like your movement in the space or by picking up um, a piece of wood or some sculpture and moving it around. So they, it really um, gave you a new, uh, a different way of interacting with space because like, uh, you know, as you would move or touch something, then you were suddenly also making sound um, that was like linked with the visuals in the space. So, um, you know, if you, if you wanted to, you could like uh, just sit in there and play the room. Um, and working with Oregon Painting Society um, also affected my own work because I had worked sculpturally before um, with the like floor arrangements, but um, learning or working with um in a with a lot a group of people who were um, very um, good at building things and um, creating a whole entire space kind of gave me um, a new ability to think spatially um, and also at that time I was getting into um, CGI uh, so I was simultaneously like part of building physical structures for the first time and also building structures um, in the computer. Um, here's a screenshot of, of inside of the program that I've been using lately, Cinema 4D, um, making a, how I make um, a, a CGI shape. Um, so up until then, I think my practice had been a lot about um, like collecting and arranging as a way of um, uh, exploring my the shape of my mind, and I hadn't really um, had a an, a method that I felt fluid in with like generating an act, uh, like an image myself. But um, I got I so through this program, I was kind of forced to start drawing shapes and because I wanted to have, I was really attracted to like CGI textures kind of, and making, I wanted to make like collages with like goopy CGI kind of feeling. Um, but I wanted to move away from found images. So that's kind of why I started working with this. But then I, I found that making actual forms um, became an important part of the process. Um, and it became like very kind of like architectural um, endeavor. Um, and Oregon Painting Society had also had a lot of um, like shapes had had kind of come out of that group like we you know we all were sort of just like constantly generating um, intuitive um, um, objects and uh, shapes started to, to emerge that felt like important um, and in this um, practice, the same thing has happened. Um, and so at the same time, uh, I'll switch over to my website. Um, so back to like the Tumblr kind of live journal thing. Um, I I used LiveJournal for a long time and in like the early 2000s and then switched to like Flickr and a number of other um, like platforms for social media sharing images. But I found myself um, feeling really frustrated by the confines of those programs. Um, so I started making my own web pages that were based in a similar feeling of wanting to just like share um, like the like whatever I was doing that day you know um, in a compact way but I could I have the freedom of like working with a whole page so I started this website and tried to update it frequently 
Um, I don't know where this will lead. Okay, this is a an old one. So that's good. It's like the toward the beginning of um, this project, I, and this is also around the time that I switched from using found images, which is what I did a lot um, with my live journal, and and I wanted to switch to using. Um, found images that were like found by me with my video camera walking around. So I, I would just like take my video camera everywhere and record um, whatever I saw that caught my attention. And then in my computer I would just take that footage and put it through like all tons of different programs at once. Um, and eventually like one aspect of that activity would lead to, toward the website as sort of an endpoint, but there were like lots of other endpoints too, like videos and whatever. But I kind of saw my web pages as being like maybe a specific endpoint that could be like, here's another one, here's another one, um, a document, like a diary page. Um, and I, I really, love working with the website format because I am, feel like, I mean, my main interest, if I have one, of doing art is trying to like map the shape of my mind or of the human mind. Um, and I think that the layout of a website is like a perfect um, place to do that because it, um, it, you know, we made it to be like the most efficient format for conveying information to each other, but it's also like very graphic and um, it's the way that it's laid out just like shows you the way that like the human mind wants to understand information. So for me to like, you know, take my recordings um, of my, you know, everyday experiences and then put them in this format. It became a way for me to, um, you know, make a sort of mental map that was visible to myself and also to anyone else on Earth <laughs> um, at any given moment. Um, so, for a long time, I did. I I worked in this way. Using my, oh, whoops, this one has, using my video camera. <laughs> um, but at some point, um, I got more, as I, be, as I started working more with the CGI, that became um, a space that I was uh, exploring as much as I had been exploring like the outside world with my video camera. I was exploring um, the CGI world that I was building. So my websites have become a lot more based on, I'll try to find one. Um, nope, that's an old one too. Um, clips, oh wait. I made it random because <laughs> I thought it would be more fun. It used to be in order. <laughs> Oops, that's another old one. Um, well, I'll just go to my newest page, which is an example of that. Um, so this is the the work that I've been doing a lot in the last 
year or two um, working with Cinema 4D and Blender um, to make these architectural CGI like sculptures and landscapes and then using my the like method that I developed with my website to explore the worlds that I am creating um, and and these shapes that I have just like that I've been making unconsciously um, I've been sort of you know just intuitively make them but then I am just like spend a long time exploring them and like taking pictures of them and arranging them uh, in the the website um, and also I've gotten the opportunity to make a number of sculpture installations um, in the last year and they've been very directly linked with this work. This is actually a sketch of um, what I made in Dusseldorf uh, last month. This was the sketch, this, this whole page is actually is like a sketch of um, getting ready for that show, designing like sculptures and um, because I've been working digitally it's made and uh, sculpturally it's made a lot of sense for me to use digital fabrication um, to produce my sculptural works using laser cutters and 3D printers and CNC machines. Um, so I'll show some of the, this is a installation that I made in March uh, American Medium in New York and we actually we used a lot of CNC, or I mean a laser cut wood and some 3D prints, but a lot of the work is also um, cut by hand uh, with a hot knife and foam, but they would project my digital shapes onto foam and then like carve it. So it was like a very kind of uh, organic and digital process. Um, and then once we had everything made, I arranged, or we all arranged it all in the space um, in a way that was um, related to how I arranged things in my website and also um, related a lot to my, the work that we did in Oregon Painting Society of creating um, an immersive space using a lot of weird sculptures <laughs> that we created. Um, and it's been interesting for me to, um, so I did this one in March and then in June um, I made a sculpture installation in Dusseldorf, uh, which is the sketch that I had on the other site was for this installation. Um, and yeah, it's been, and then this one now here, um, I've kind of been focusing a lot on physical installations now for like the past couple months. Um, and I haven't been really updating my website at all, even though that is like a main um, project for me that is important for me to like as a daily activity I've kind of um, been so wrapped up in like producing these physical objects that it's taken me kind of away from that project that is supposed to be like um, my ongoing project so um, yeah you can see here this is uh, the same, or that's the the real version of, or the physical version of that sketch. Um, ding. <laughs> um, but it's been like uh, an important, I think, step in my process to go through this um, uh, this time of focusing so much on just like physically manifesting 
um, all of these digital uh, explorations into a space. Um, and I think now that I've kind of pushed through this uh, period, like compact period of intense installations, I'm looking forward to um, kind of processing that again back into my digital world. Um, because uh, it's always very important for me to have the sculpture and performance and digital and whatever all feeding back into each other. Um, and maybe right now I'll show a video because I haven't really talked about that yet. Um, and maybe it'll be a nice break. <laughs> Let's see. How about this one? OK, this will be a few minutes long. And um, yeah, it's related to everything. <laughs> it's um, video footage that I took and collaged together. Um, and it, I use a recording that I made on an analog synthesizer that Birch built. Um, and yeah, let's watch it. Yeah, um, so videos um, have also been an important part of my work and I think like that one is a kind of good example of um, how working with technology has been uh, a very, a kind of like a exciting relationship for me, um, 
to like when I'm when I bring footage or whatever into the computer, like in that case, um, I am really just like playing, like I'm playing, it, it, I think it's like very close to playing music, um, like because I, I'm just kind of like, you know, entering a mind frame where I'm just engaging with this instrument, which is the computer and like as I'm running these things through the programs, I am like feeling like I'm playing music as as the uh, as the footage is like you know moving in like getting cut up and placed in different places, and then I like press play and we'll watch it. This new kind of sequence that I've made from like the the footage that I took, it sort of becomes this other. Uh, um, mind for myself um, and so the whole process is like you know where it's at for me and then finishing a video like I usually will make a video like over the course of a day or two and then after it's done then I'll just like watch it tons of times and it becomes this kind of like weird song to me because I know like every rhythm of it and every visual combo um, and I think that relates a lot to like how I work generally um, with the computer because I, I really uh, think of it as um, like a give and take relationship. Like I'm I'm not I don't like come to the computer with an idea of what I want to have done and then like you know t do it. I, it's more like navigating the programs and seeing like what the shape of that program is and then you know, reacting to that shape. Um, so I know, you know, what, what I, wh what comes out of it is like, kind of, I feel like it, it gives me um, a new idea of like the shape of um, the, the human mind and the shape of the computer mind and um, how that intersection um, the, the subtleties of that relationship um, is something that really interests me. Um, I could play another video or if people have questions. Can you play another video? Yeah, <laughs> good question. <laughs> I have one right here.
The sun's shot in San Francisco. <laughs> Um, I guess I could keep showing videos or <coughs> think. No, I, I love those images of Peru, and I was wondering, you featured the painting a lot, and is that, do you see that? 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like the interface of the program when you're making the video looks like a tapestry. <laughs> um, I think I had that up here, actually. Uh, a screenshot that I took right here of um, in Final Cut, making one of those videos, I think, that we watched even. Um, yeah, it's totally, I, I feel like it's related to weaving, definitely. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I think, I feel like um, my performance work is very, very slow, actually. Um, I always move very slowly. <laughs> and the, the sound is, like, more... Um, slowly transforming. I think because like in a um, performance setting, like that kind of changes the time uh, feeling to, to feel more intense sometimes if you're going very slowly. Whereas in video, I'm often trying to create a feeling of um, that's like overwhelming uh, your senses so that it's just like, you know, um, tearing you out of like a normal flow. So yeah, making like a, these fast patterns um, is a way of doing that. <laughs> but yeah, working, I mean, that's also why I like working with technology is because it's like so fast and immediate for me, um, more than like making a physical thing. <laughs> like it takes so long. <laughs> like for some people that's like a, a, a joy in you know, building something, <laughs> but for me, it's joyful for me to like just like make something very quickly <laughs> in the computer. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, I mean, I guess you you've kind of been giving us a little bit of organizing process that you use in your approach, but I wonder. I definitely get a sense, um, and this is familiar to me also of the, kind of you were saying, there's a dialogue between what some of the technologies offer, <coughs> and sort of their logic and their mind, and uh, a dialogue with, with your own imagination and your own fluidity and process. I'm curious if you encounter or notice like a rigor or maybe rules or, or some criteria that you use to know whether you're getting kind of closer to work that you feel realizes your aesthetic or, or the what you're trying to do. Um, and how you know it's done and what makes something better or worse. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, there's, a, there's a lot of freedom and playfulness and I wonder whether there's an obverse side of that that's, mm. that's important. Mm. To yeah, um, well, yeah, I feel like um, the playfulness is like a very important part of it for me and like um, like regarding everything or kind of the process of just like making um, and having whatever comes out of that be filtered into some output that's just there and sort of the the format of the whole thing more than any individual piece is kind of um, maybe most important to me. But I also like the idea of that each piece can like reflect the whole thing too, so that there can be sort of like an inherent form within any given like image that I make that reflects also like the greater. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so like if you're doing a video. There's an attention to the kind of total uh, view of the whole video over time that you want to see in cuts and in shots. And like yeah, so like just now I showed three videos in a row, um, or four or something. Maybe a few of them might have like 
blended together more for you guys or something, but for me, I was very aware of the end of each one because they're like uh, very, you know, like little. <laughs> yeah, but also, I mean, I think they can read as like, you know, they're all related and flowing into each other, but they're also like uh, a little song or something. is always playing with the default, like Corey Archangel or Joel Holmberg, where they're sort of using the default and just kind of expo like putting that out there. It's almost like a pop art with default. And then there's the sort of camp of internet-based artists who are kind of interested in glitch and intervention. So they're kind of taking the default or the confines of the technology and turning it in on itself to reveal kind of its breakages. So a glitch artist like Rosa Menkman might be someone like that, or even Takeshi Murata. And um, I think there's something different about your work that isn't default and isn't breakage. And I was wondering if you wanted to maybe talk about that, because I feel like you have like an intuitive way in which you use your like use um, CGI programs and things like that, that isn't just using all of the confines, but isn't but isn't breaking it. And I just was wondering mm -hmm. if you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, yeah. I do feel like my work is, um, even though it's like so based in technology, yeah. it's also like um, I think I'm more interested in just like reality and human experience, and like technology is such a part of that um, that it makes sense to like use it and explore it a lot um, in relation to like everything. But I'm not maybe so interested in like. Um, I don't know, like a, um, focusing like on specific uh, problems or whatever. Online. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm more um, just coming at it with like as an explorer and like a poet. <laughs> so I'm just you know kind of. Um, uh, I guess I'm not trying to like make a statement about something more as much as I am um, playing with it <laughs> as it, to like to like f map out and find the shape of it <laughs> um, do you ever find that the software or the technology um, gets in the way or there's barriers in terms of the editing software like you want to do something but you can't do it or yeah like yeah, it can be really frustrating. I like it when I can get everything just, you know, flowing at once and just go between the programs. But yeah, I mean, certainly there are times when like everything's glitching out <laughs> or you know, it's like my computer's going too slow. I mean, I try to set it up so that I'm like like in Photoshop doing this thing and then I like save it and while it's saving, I like go over here and like get the animation going and then like while that's rendering then I like take the screenshots and put it in Dreamweaver to like make the website and then while that's loading I do this thing. That's like ideal <laughs> but you know obviously sometimes the computer's like <laughs> and then I'm like well I guess I'll go walk around and take video <laughs> 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 which is good because actually that is when it gets to be like I can't like I have pres I'm rendering something and it's like I can't work on the computer and it's like that's a really good time to go on a walk <laughs> and do something else. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? Well, thank you guys yeah, for coming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.